Just gonna uh, give you some things, inshallah, so that you so some food for thought. Why the Trinity is invalid? Hopefully, it'll be helpful to to both Muslims and non-Muslims and Christians, uh, so that they can use their own intellect and their own um, mind to to work this thing out. Okay. Uh, my intent isn't to 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 hurt anybody. It's just there so that people can um, see, if, uh, you know, investigate for themselves. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmadhu wa nasalli ala Rasulhi al-Karim. So the first piece of evidence that the Trinity is invalid is the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible. Even if you just looked at this, this is enough for you to for to for you to know that there's Christianity or Christians to believe in a Trinity. They you they have to have come out with this thing from somewhere, but it definitely isn't the Bible. Okay. The next piece of evidence is if you look at Harper Collins Harper Collins Encyclop Encyclopedia of the Bible, it states. The doctrine of the Trinity is not revealed in either the Old Testament or the New Testament of the Bible. Now this is a, a huge authority on, on the Bible. It's the encyclopedia, Harper Collins Encyclopedia. It's no small, it's no small publication. Okay. So num the third piece of evidence in 220 CE a person called Tertullian in Carthage started the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, when I say started, he, there may, uh, he, because he was such an authority, he was a lawyer and he was a priest. So his word counted for a lot. So his, that's, why, that's why we say that he, he was kind of the instigator for it. The next piece of evidence is Christian scholars say the Trinity is an evolved doctrine. Number one, the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE developed the doctrine a bit further. Okay? So they've already had over a hundred years of this thought after Tertullian going around. So by this time, it's got into the minds of priests and, and uh, Christian scholars that this could be a possibility. So in, th in 325 CE, they've, de they've developed the doctrine. The Council of Constantinople in 381 CE ratified it. So they are, they've had another 56 years to think of on this further. All right. So they've they've now got to a position where they're, they're now saying, oh, so their fathers and forefathers in, uh, of, of the priesthood have actually been uh, talking about this and accepting it, but now they're ratifying it in 381 CE. It became authoritative in 451 CE in the Council of Chalcedon. In the Council of Chalcedon, it became authoritative. This is 451. This is uh, after Tertullian, we're talking 231 years. So it's taken for this idea of the Trinity to come about, it's taken 231 years for it to be established in the minds and the beliefs of the people. Okay, next piece of evidence. Hans Kung, he's a leading the theologian of the Catholic Church. The Catholicism it revolves around this Trinity, and as, as everybody knows, it's the, every time they worship Catholics, we'll be saying, uh, "In God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost." So this is this is ingrained inside their beliefs. So he is saying, Hans Kung is saying, there is no concept of one God in three persons, no doctrine of a triune God no concept of Trinity in the New Testament. These are very solid words. These are, these are, these are words to think about. The next piece of our evidence 
again, a great publication, a well, very well-known publication, Harper's Bible Dictionary, says, the formal doctrine of the Trinity as it was defined by the church councils of the 4th and 5th century is not to be found in the New Testament. So every, uh, every authority from which you ever angle you're looking at now is just, just slamming this, this Trinity idea. Okay, the next piece of evidence. The New Catholic Encyclopedia says, again, again a great publication, the formula itself does not reflect the immediate consciousness of the period of origins. Now, just to clarify uh, what the period of origins actually is, a lot of people will actually know what the period of origins is, but some people won't. Just to clarify for those people, it's a time when Jesus uh, salam, was preaching his mission. So at this time, nobody knew about the Trinity. And also among the apostolic fathers, there has been nothing even remotely approaching such a mentality or pers perspective. Just to explain what, who the apostolic fathers were, it's good to have, have this as a reminder, is the Apostolic Fathers are uh, early Christian writings produced in the first and first half of the second, cen second century. These writings, though popular in early Christianity, were ulti ultimately not part of the New Testament. New Testament once it reached its final form. The next piece of evidence. The first commandment, there is only one God. And when Jesus was asked about the first, uh, what is the most important commandment, he said very categorically, very simply to the people, not fearing anything. Of prophets, when they come, they come at a time of fitna, they do not fear anything. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Very simple message. The Lord our God is one God. And last, there are three places in the Bible Jesus salam, says Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one which is Mark 12, 29 Matthew 22, 37 Luke 10, 27 Please don't take offence if you believe in the Trinity This is just evidence for you and uh, for the world to know that the, you know, the, the idea of Trinity um, is not found in the Bible. If you if you if you base your faith on the Bible, then you need to look at this thing. This is very important for you. Christianity claims to be a monotheistic religion, and if it goes back to its roots, it definitely is a monotheistic religion. It's fallen into hands of third, fourth, fifth century, which have turned it very slowly into a. Uh, uh, a polytheistic religion, unfortunately. Please, again, don't take offense. I hope my words reach you in, in, a, uh, in, in a good way. Okay, thank you. Salam alaikum.